Coming up next on Jewish Voice, Rabbi Michael Zeidler discusses God's supernatural intervention in Israel and the lives of the Jewish people. They were the chosen ones, but he chose them for what? So that Yeshua, Jesus, would be born so then all the world would be saved. Welcome to this edition of Jewish Voice. I'm your host, Jonathan Burnus. The tiny nation of Israel seems to be in the news almost daily. Why does this tiny land with a population of just six million get so much attention in the media? What is the biblical significance of Israel and how is this related to the last days and the return of Jesus to this earth? Well, my guest today is the founder of Baruch Hashem Messianic Ministries in upstate New York. He's a Messianic rabbi who has seen signs and wonders follow the preaching of God's Word all around the world. He's also the author of a unique and insightful book entitled, Why Israel is Supernatural. Please give a warm welcome to Rabbi Michael Zettler. Hi, Michael. Jonathan. Welcome Jonathan. to Jewish Voice. Have Thank a seat. You. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Michael. Uh, your your book, Why Israel is Supernatural, is really intriguing. Why is Israel supernatural? It's amazing, Jonathan. If you look back at Assyria, if you look back at Babylonian times, any of these particular nations are non-existent. But Israel came back from the dead, literally resurrected by God's hand. That's one of the main reasons why Israel is supernatural. So many miracles have taken place in Israel, granted in other places too in the world, but more so in Israel, both in biblical times and today. It can be counted historically and biblically. And because of that reason, Israel is supernatural. In the establishment in 1948, they were outnumbered by the Arab nations 100 to 1. Their weaponry had been basically confiscated by the British government two weeks before Israel was established as a state, as a nation. As it says in Isaiah, can a country be formed in a day? Can a nation be established in one day? And that's exactly what was fulfilled. As our friend Sid Roth would say, now that's supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. How true. That's great. Give us another example. That's a great one. Well, a very old kibbutz, Tigana. And they were coming from, uh, you know, coming from Syria with 200 armored columns, 45 tanks, the armored cars and what have you. They had no weaponry. They had two cannon in the whole nation of Israel from the Prussian War of 1870. And <laughs> that's old. They fired on the lead tank. They took out the lead Syrian tank as it came in the perimeter of Dagana. And the Syrians thought they had all this weaponry. And they turned around the whole 200 column and rickety back to, uh, to, to that's Syria. That's fantastic. God fighting the battles. Uh, your book is very intriguing. Uh, you talk in the book, you have a chapter on, um, on Christopher Columbus, or you talk about Christopher Columbus in the book uh, and connect it with, with Israel. Uh, talk about that. That's, that's interesting. Well, Christopher Columbus, his actual name, Christopher, translates as Christ-bearer. And he truly believed in the Word of God, in the prophecies, both Messianic and all the prophecies about Israel itself. And he even wrote a book of prophecies himself, thinking that maybe God was going to use him to find a place for the Jewish people, to have a homeland. He believed because of the Bible, and all these other explorers did not believe this, that the earth was round. And he had three Jewish scientists that worked with him that came up with new ways of equipment 
some types of navigation equipment. You believe he was Jewish? Yes. In fact, in, I believe it was in the 1940s, a man from Europe determined that because Christopher Columbus, Cologne, meaning a Jewish name, surname, that because he came from Spain, that perhaps he was a converso, one who had converted to Christianity as a Jewish man, and this was also because of the Inquisition, that many were doing this. Well, look at the year he left, 1492. Exactly. That's the Spanish Inquisition. It's and Tish B'Av also. Interesting. That's right. That's right. Uh, you, you dedicate a chapter to the history of America in Israel. Can you give us some insight on the history of American Israel? Yes. Our founding fathers, even before that, the, the Puritans, the, the pilgrims, all of them coming on the Mayflower, they called themselves the comers. They believed that they were coming to a new world to establish a separation from the Church of England and what was going on there with the tyranny and persecution and what have you. But they also believed that God had a plan for the Jewish people and because of that they studied the Hebrew Scriptures. In fact, when they celebrated with the First Nations people, the Indians at that time, it was in September, not November, and it was a Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot celebration. Interesting. They Interesting. followed the various different feasts of God that the Jewish people were following, and they believed that the Jewish people did need a homeland all the way back then. And then we see the Jewish people supporting the Revolutionary War. They were tremendous backers of the Revolutionary War. Others fought in the Revolutionary War. And later on, we have a man named Mordecai Noah, one of the first American Jews born in the United States. And he was a great man of God who was used mightily as a spokesperson for the Jewish people here in America to speak to those presidents of his time back in the 1700s and on. And consequently, because of that, it planted a seed in them, our founding fathers, that they knew that the Jewish people not only needed to be protected in this country, but eventually should have another homeland for themselves. Truly Judeo-Christian roots. And you know what I think of as you tell that story? I will bless those that bless Israel, yes. Genesis 12, 3. And the blessing that has been bestowed upon America since we were formed as a nation. Do, do you see that, do you see that definite, connection? Definite connection. It's because of where we have come from, our roots, with our founding fathers and all those that supported the Jewish people and later blessed the nation of Israel when it was established in 1948 is because of the prosperity, the safety, all that we enjoy as compared to other countries because of that. And I, I, I dread of what has been happening because there's a different direction now that's God been taking place. God help us if we withdraw our support from Israel. You devote a chapter to the question, is God finished with Israel? Talk about that. You know, there's so many people, Jonathan, that are believing that it's the church, quote unquote, the body of Messiah, that now has replaced, it's actually called replacement theology, that has replaced the, the true natural Israel. But this is not the case. Jerusalem is the apple of his eye. He granted to Abraham and through Isaac and his descendants the nation of Israel. Consequently, this cannot happen that we would just accept the fact that Israel is no longer relevant for this day and age. It says in Isaiah, when they cry out, to whom they have pierced, they say, Baruch Habab Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, how are they going to do that if there isn't a natural Israel? The natural Israel affects the church, which is the spiritual Israel. That I, I grant you. That I agree. But not replacement theology that says fully replaced by the church, by the body of Messiah. Michael, you, you, you're traveling all over the world teaching on Jewish roots. Yes. Do, you, do you see a revival of Christians grasping their Jewish roots, or do you see replacement theology on the rise, what are you seeing out there in the church? Both. It's a dichotomy of both. And what I try to do when I see that, I try to dispel it, have them realize how important Israel is for today, no matter how much more biased they might be, 
You and I both know that, that over 70% of Israelis in Israel are secular. They don't even know the Tanakh. They don't even know what is going on and why Israel is so important, except it's the land that they live in. And I try to have them understand that. And when they want to embrace the Jewish feast, I explain to them, these are not Jewish feasts. These are God's feasts. Right. And God called the chosen people, the Jewish people first. But God wants all because there's what? The wild olive branch and the natural olive branch. But they're grafted into the same vine. Who is Yeshua? Who is Jesus? Amen. We become one new man according to Ephesians 2.14. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Michael, I think most of the people who watch Jewish Voice already are part of the choir. They understand God's faithfulness to, to the Jewish people, to Israel, and why it's important for us to embrace Israel. Amen. But I, I'm sure there's some people that are watching that might even be watching the program for the first time. What would you say to people that really don't understand how this applies to them as a Christian? I would say, first of all, a lot of, I've run into this a lot, that you need to go into the Old Testament. You need to go into the Tanakh and you need to look there, not just in the New Testament. So many find themselves just in the New Testament, a Brit Hadashah as we call it, to be able to have their way, have their direction, have their, you know, their pathway. But they need to look in the old, because in the old God says exactly what they need to understand about Israel, and it hasn't changed. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Consequently, they need to embrace that, all of it. It's the completeness of what God has called. You know, there's no separation. You know that white piece of paper, that blank piece of paper between the old and the new? Right. When I go into Did churches, you rip it out? I tell them, explain, and I tell them, rip it out. And you hear all these pages, turn, you know, just tearing. <laughs> it's so wonderful because they have to understand it's the completeness of the Word of God. You ever have any pastors sneering at you, though? That would be... Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. ripping our... You're desecrating <laughs> our Bibles. Well, what... Okay, so they, the, people watching may say, well, that's, you're a Jewish believer. This is a messianic program. That's great for you. God, God wants all people to be saved, that none should perish. But what's so special about the Jewish people? How do you respond to that? God chose them first. The IDAB, okay. No, oh, we were on a roll. We were rolling. <laughs> Praise God. What if I'm just getting emotional about this? That's <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Can we ask a question? I will in a sec. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Michael, I'm sure there's some people thinking, well, you're, this is a Jewish, Messianic Jewish program. You're Jewish believers. That's great for you. But God wants none to perish but all to find everlasting life. He loves everyone equally. So, so what is this about Israel, the Jewish people? What's so special about them? How do you respond to that? Well, I'm sure you hear that a lot. Yes. Well, God chose the Jewish people first. They were the chosen ones. But he chose them for what? So that Yeshua, Jesus, would be born so then all the world would be saved. We know what John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he desires that none would perish, but all would come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, of our Messiah. Where does he come from? From the Jewish stock, from the Jewish lineage. Am I saying that they are special, that we are special? Heaven forbid, no. Everyone is special in God's eyes. But for whatever reason, he chose us, the Jewish people, our landsmen, that we are to be the ones to bring the Mashiach. But now everyone can embrace it. So what I give as an answer is that you need to have your own personal relationship with the Lord. My fingerprints are different from your fingerprints. That means just the same. Our walk with the Lord is different in each one's life just as our fingerprints are. You know what I like to say to people, Michael, that... Um, if we believe God reached a point where he said enough with Israel and cut them off, how can we, as New Covenant believers, trust that God continues to forgive us? At what point 
does he say enough with you already? I've had it with you. But it's God's faithfulness to Israel that, that allows us to rest easy and, exactly. and trust him to, to be faithful to us. It's his chesed. It's his mercy. It's his unmerited favor, both to the nation of Israel, which, as I said just before, is 70% secular. I mean, think about that. They don't even observe the Shabbat. They don't observe the feasts of God. They don't do anything. And yet God's chesed is on that little tiny nation, as you said. Well, let's talk more about this little tiny nation. We just have a few minutes left. You have a chapter on Israel as the time clock. Yes. I want you to talk about this. This okay. is really important. Israel is truly God's timepiece. And it took place even before 1948. In the 1800s, when the Jewish people started coming, believe it or not, Jonathan, there was back then, way back, there was a early rain and a latter rain. The early rain for the barley harvest, the latter rain for the wheat harvest, right? Well, the latter rain stopped when the dispersion, the diaspora, took place. When the Jewish people started coming back in the 1800s, the latter rain came back. And just as Israel is a time clock, well, something in New York City, in a Dutch church in New York City near Wall Street, there was a revival with a man named Jeremiah. I can't remember his last name right now. Don't test me. But he was praying with a bunch of businessmen for lunch. And make a long story short, it spread throughout the world over a number of months, all over the world, the latter rain revival Praise God. in the 1800s. Just, just one minute left, Michael. You, you're, you're preaching all over the world. You're seeing signs and wonders following. You're blowing the shofar. People are getting miraculously healed. Yes. What, what's happening? Just like you said, the blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the lame are walking, tumors are disappearing. I don't understand it. I used to blow the shofar and only to, to welcome the presence of God, to, to drive out demonic presence or whatever, you know, the Lord would direct me. But when I was in, particularly in South America for six months, the Lord directed me to blow the shofar and then... I saw in services 10 people miraculously healed of their deafness. I saw tumors disappearing the size of lemons. I don't understand it, but, you know, Paul wore those cloths, those aprons, and afterwards he sent them out to the people, and they were healed. Well, you brought your shofar with us. Let, we have a studio audience here below the shofar for those in the audience Amen. at home and in the uh, audience, and let's believe God together uh, for healing. Hallelujah. How many need a healing? Many of you that are watching the program need a healing, need a miracle in your life. Many in the studio audience, listen, without faith it's impossible to please Him. So let's just believe now. Amen. Michael, blow that shofar for us. Jonathan, you're going to have the phone off the hook, the emails coming in, because the miraculous is about to happen by the hand of God and He alone. Let it be so. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you receive your healing in the name of Yeshua. Uh, Michael, thank you so much. Keep Bless proclaiming you. the word and seeing signs and thank wonders. You. Rabbi Michael Zetler, everyone. <laughs> Friends, if you lack the understanding of Israel, you simply won't have a clear picture of the last days and what must happen before Jesus can return. So I encourage you to get this book and read it from cover to cover so you, like the men of Issachar, will be wise by understanding the times we live in. I want to send it to you as our way of saying thank you for helping us to reach the Jewish people with life-saving medical care and, most importantly, the gospel. These are the faces of the children of Israel. Jewish men, women, and children in remote areas of Africa and India, living in physical and spiritual poverty with little hope for the future. These are the people that Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice are reaching by the thousands with desperately needed medical care and the good news of the gospel of Yeshua. 
And as new doors of opportunity open to reach even more Jewish people around the world, your help is essential at this critical time. Right now, when you give your gift of $40 or more, you'll be helping bring medical and dental care and the message of the gospel to the lost sheep of the House of Israel. As his thank you for your compassion, Jonathan Burness will send you his exciting new workbook and CD on the power of confessing the Hebrew Scriptures. This breakthrough resource will teach you how to confess and claim biblical promises on healing and wholeness in the original Hebrew without extensive language training. And if you'll increase your gift to $65 or more to help an entire family of suffering Jewish people in Ethiopia or India, you'll also receive Michael Zeitler's fascinating book, Why Israel is Supernatural. This important volume clearly explains where Israel fits in the scheme of world events and end time prophecy and is a must read for all Christians. So please pick up your phone or go online and give your best gift of $40, $65 or more today. And thank you for helping Jonathan Burness take the love and compassion of Yeshua to God's people, changing their lives now and for all eternity.